Yo guys, I love randomness. Like I love random powered algorithms. Oh, what's that? You eyeballing my new computer setup, are ya? My new beastie AI machine with three monitors, soon to be four once to get this all set up, a liquid cooled i7 processor, a 240 gig solid state drive, and of course, an EBGA 1080 Ti GPU with 11 gigs of VRAM. Well, hey, thank you for noticing. But this isn't the video for that. We'll come back to this on a future video. But back to today's video, I've always wanted to make an episode on randomness for some legit years now. So today, no more excuses. I'm gonna give you guys a video on randomness no matter what it takes. But there's a slight problem. Currently, I don't have any cool software ideas for randomness, but maybe we can think of something on the fly. Let's see. Software that generates a random number and you have to guess as many as you can in a sequence to get a score. Ah, oh, snore. Okay, well, what if I add a UI to that and turn it into a game? So, you now play a hero, fighting an enemy, and the gameplay is guessing to get as close as possible to a random number for possible attacking and defending. Oh, just give up. Ah, I've got nothing. Finding random inspiration is difficult. So, how about I video chat my friend Jade from the Up and Adam channel to help inspire some random ideas? Hey Jade! Meow, meow, meow. Meow, meow, uh, meow, meow. Jade? Hey, what's up? So Jade, I want to make a video about randomness, but I can't think of any good ideas. I figured since you cover a lot of physics topics on your channel, maybe you have some ideas to help me demonstrate randomness. Well, this isn't exactly randomness. It's auto masquerading as randomness. Have you ever heard of the butterfly effect? The butterfly effect? What's so random and interesting about Butterflies. Have you ever heard the saying a butterfly flapping its wings in New York can cause a hurricane in Texas or Tokyo or Timbuktu or you get the idea? Whoa, wait, wait, wait. So you're telling me that butterflies can cause hurricanes? Kind of. Um, let's start over. What did you do on the weekend? Hmm. Well, I watched SpaceX launch a ship for the first time in my life from California. It was probably one of the coolest things I've ever seen. Cool? And okay, um, SpaceX and Elon Musk, perfect example. Let me ask you this. What if Pierre Omidja's father never moved to the US? <laughs> Jade, where are you going with this? Pierre Omidja was a French-born American entrepreneur who moved to the US with his family when he was still a kid. Later, he went on to start a company called eBay. And as you probably know, eBay but bought PayPal. PayPal. Huh. Ah. Elon got his Tesla and SpaceX money from the sale of PayPal. So, if Pierre never moved to the US, then it's possible Elon would have never got the capital needed to start Tesla, SpaceX, etc. But most importantly, I maybe would have never been able to watch a spacecraft launch from California. Huh. And this is called the butterfly effect, you said? Exactly, yeah. So the butterfly effect is the idea that tiny changes can have huge impacts in surprising and unpredictable ways. Jade, thank you. That was actually super helpful. Okay, so to summarize the butterfly effect phenomenon, if Pierre never moved to the US, it's possible that I may have never been able to watch a SpaceX launch from California this weekend. Without any context, it may be impossible to see that correlation. And just pause for a second and think about that. That is just incredibly fascinating. The power of randomness. But there's a huge problem with the butterfly effect. To use it as an argument to make predictions like this is incredibly speculative. It's impossible to prove, for instance, that without eBay, Elon wouldn't have been able to create SpaceX. Because what if some other company would have bought PayPal? And maybe even for more money? Hell, what if Pierre would have just started eBay from his birth country of France? <laughs> Listen, it's quite pointless to drive down what if road because there is no scientific way to figure this out. There are just way too many variables at play. However, as software developers, we can kind of sort of mimic this whole process by writing a simulator with a lot less variables. We will be able to run our simulator and then make changes to the initial variables like Pierre and his family not moving to the US for example and somewhat observe the butterfly effect phenomenon. And with that, I think I got a great idea for a butterfly effect simulator.
All right, and here it is. This is our butterfly effect simulator, and it works like so. This is Clarissa, and at the start of the simulator, Clarissa gets an acceptance letter from Stanford University that clearly states she has exactly 365 days to declare a major from the time of the letter received. Now, Clarissa is sure that she wants to major in one of these five interests of hers, computer science, biology, astrophysics, visual arts, and marketing, but is undecided at the start of the simulator. We'll follow Clarissa's life over the next 360 five days and the people that she meets interacts and hangs out with will influence her interests Clarissa on day one only starts off with one friend, which is her mom. And her mom wants her to declare marketing because she thinks it's safe. And she hates visual arts because she thinks it's a waste of time. Just let me live my life, mom. But the people that she befriends over the year will also influence her with their own likes and dislikes. So the major she ends up declaring is anyone's guess. Now what does this have to do with randomness you may be thinking? Well, this entire simulator is based off of a pseudo random number generator, which means we can use a number seed, that's this on screen to decide Clarissa's entire life. Yes, I'm talking from day one all the way to day 365 and beyond if we wanted to. And this is really important. This means if we run the same number seed, Clarissa will live the same exact life every single time, which will allow us to later compare how her life changed when we change something at the start and rerun it. Okay, so. Now that we have the rules of our simulator all set up, let's simulate a bunch of seeds to find a universe that is interesting enough for our demonstration purposes. And to do this, I'm simply going to run the simulator with random seeds over and over, recording data until we find a good universe. Now this would be really annoying to do by hand. So thankfully, I'm ready for bed and will automate this process overnight. When I return to the office tomorrow, I will be swimming in the data. Yeah, nighty night, little Clarissa. Boy, oh boy, does it feel like Christmas. Show me the data. Oh, right. Unity 3D doesn't have a good graphing framework yet, and investing the time to build my own from scratch would take up a lot of time. So instead, I'm just gonna write a quick Python script that will take in all this text data and spit out graphical data. Just give me a quick second to write this script. Done. And automate. Ah, uh, I love automation. Okay, so now we have all of our universes visualized, but which one shall we choose? Um, uh, universe 959, blah, 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 looks good enough to me. So let's see. She declared marketing as her major of choice. Makes sense, her mom wanted to do that. Wait, why was astrophysics so close to winning? Why does she hate biology and visual arts so much? Is it due to the influences of her mom or what's going on here? Well, thankfully, we've also collected friendship data as well. And we also have that data graph visualizing her friendships. And whoa, this data is incredibly interesting. Starting from the beginning, on day three, Clarissa met Epilov at the park, and they instantly became good friends. They hung out a lot, even more so than Clarissa hung out with her mom. So Epilov influenced her to clear astrophysics and stay away from biology, because that's what Epilov was into. Which is why, pretty early into the year, we can see astrophysics taking a dominant lead. But on day 188, something tragic happened in her life. Ipilov comes over to Clarissa's house to tell her that he is moving out of state for school. And just like that, Clarissa lost her favorite person to hang out with. Now, this event didn't change what she thought about astrophysics. She still read books and watch her favorite astrophysics programs on TV. However, following Ipilov's departure, there were two people that Clarissa started hanging out with more. Paji Doge, who liked marketing and disliked visual arts, and Iwuvaj. All these names are randomly generated. Don't hate. Who liked computer science but also disliked visual arts. And on day 280, she met and became really good friends with Weezib at the park, who liked marketing but also disliked visual arts. Not to mention on occasion, she still hang out with her mother who had the same influence as both Pajidov and Weezib. So with these four most influential people in her life all disliking visual arts, naturally she grew to hate it as well. And of course, because three out of four of them liked marketing and Ipilov was no longer a part of Clarissa's life, it was easy for the three of them to influence her decision in about 150 days. Now let's try and relate this back to the real world. We're now essentially at the part in which Pierre's father chose his profession. <laughs> okay, listen, I know this is all like super hypothetical, but just 
please bear with me. It's all in good fun. Now, let's just hypothetically say that now with this marketing degree, Clarissa later moves to the country States United. Her child decades later creates MiBay. MiBay later buys PayBud. And Leon Scum starts a company, Space Z, from the PayBuds buyout. And finally, years later, Brilja watches a Space Z ship take off from Fornical States United. Magical. This is universe one, our base universe. This is the actual reality, however you want to consider it. But now, let's go back to day one and change a tiny variable in our simulation. Something that is completely believable to happen and you probably wouldn't even notice in your everyday life. So maybe, the night before day one in the sim, Clarissa and her mom has a fight. Let's say they have a fight about, um, uh, they have a fight about, um... Clarissa wanted to watch Game of Thrones. Please, mom. It's the finale! But Mum was set on seeing Judge Judy's final decision. Would he be put away for good or go free? Tension was rising. You could almost feel the frustration radiating from Clarissa's face. It just isn't fair. I hate you! She screamed. Now I'll never know who the true king is. She ran to her room and slammed the door. She didn't realize it at the time, but this little tantrum would affect the course of her life in ways she couldn't imagine. Right, <laughs> what she said. So let's tweak their relationship variable just a tad bit and rerun the simulator to see if Clarissa will still major in marketing. But first, let's hypothesize. I think this will make her interest in marketing weaker, allowing her to choose astrophysics instead. But post your hypothesis in the comments now. 3, 2, 1, okay, time's up. Let's run this slightly altered sim. All right, and done. It's data time, whoa. Biology came in first? Astrophysics was crushing it, then suddenly she just lost all interest in it. And marketing barely even did anything in this universe. What happened? Well, seeing as our friend Jade was so poetic in kicking off this alternate universe, why don't you take it away and tell us what happened, Jade? Oh, okay, um, let's see. Clarissa meets Ippolov again on day three at the park. And because she's still mad at her mum, she takes refuge in his comforting nature and doesn't leave his side. Don't worry about your mum, he says. We can watch Game of Thrones at my house. She ends up hanging out with him a lot more than in the first universe. And he influences her a lot more toward astrophysics and away from biology. The star-crossed lovers are inseparable. <laughs> hey, I wasn't done. On day 190, Clarissa is walking over to Ippolov's house to confess her love when she bumps into Exona, who has just also been over to Ippolov's to confess her love. He was playing her. Poor Clarissa is distraught. Now, just a quick side note. In the first universe, Clarissa never got that close with Ippolov because she was hanging out with her mum and only friends that her mum approved of. So she was never walking over to Ippolov's house to confess her love, so she never bumped into Exona. Now Exona and Clarissa become instant best friends and she confesses that astrophysics just reminds her of Ippolov because they always used to look at the stars together. She's not sure she wants to study it anymore. Exona is a biologist and over the next 150 days convinces Clarissa to study biology and drop astrophysics. On day 365, Clarissa goes off to study biology at Stanford and she couldn't be happier. All because of that little fight with her mom. <laughs> Jade, you either need to publish a novella or seek professional therapy. I can't put my finger on which one though. Oh, thanks. Anyways, following this juicy drama of a story, let's hypothetically say that Clarissa now goes on to graduate with the bio degree. And instead of relocating to States United for her work, she joins a research team and she marries much later in life, to the point in which her offspring is born a lot later as well, missing the opportunity to buy any of Leon Scum's businesses. Brilja, I'm so sorry. All because the founder of Mibe's mother got into a fight with her mother one random night before college, you will never see that Leon Scum spacey ship launch. Man, what a wacky fun episode. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I want you all to go please check out my friend Jade from the Up and Adam channel. We did a, another collaboration over on her channel and you can learn about all the physics of the butterfly effect. I think it's really interesting stuff. Please go check it out. Other than that, this simulator is up for download if you want to check it out for whatever reason. Link to that is in the description. And I'm going to try my best to put up the open source for this, but I just learned that GitHub has a 100 megabyte limit and I'm not 
entirely sure how to get around that yet, but I, I'll do my best to put that up. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon to get notified when I upload new videos. Please leave a like on this video and come follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Come on, let's be friends. Doing all this stuff helps out a lot more than you guys know. I mean, look at the growth that we just went through. We're at like 50,000 subscribers now. What? Thank you guys for the support. Thank you so much. I hope to see you guys back next week for a new episode, but whatever the case may be, remember to always feed your curiosity. I'm gonna walk out of this shot. I'm holding the phone. I guess that works. Oh, I dropped it. Mmm.